morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and today we're going to be taking a look at Severe Tropical Cyclone Olga, which peaked out as a Category 4 strength system last night, and then we'll also go and take a look at some thunderstorm activity for Central Queensland, some snow for Southern Australia, and then just a general look at the Australian weather picture over the next 10 days. So starting things off, of course, we're going to go down to Central Queensland, considering that's where the main event is happening in terms of weather affecting Australia. You can see that there's been some strong thunderstorms that have been impacting the area there. They're now moving offshore, but you can still see this speckled cloud through here streaming in around the Rockhampton area. You can see that there is some actually heavy rainfall moving towards Gladstone and Rockhampton here, and that has been pretty consistent over the past 12 hours. Uh, we've had some totals up towards 50 millimeters through here over the past 24 hours, and possibly some totals approaching 50 millimeters are possible today. But the majority of the rainfall is going to be between Gladstone down towards uh, Gympie on the sun. Sunshine Coast, including Harvey Bay and Bundaberg. That's where we're going to be seeing the worst of the rainfall throughout the course of today. And if we do take a look at the rainfall forecast, you can see throughout Monday, we're expecting the rainfall to really pick up probably around this afternoon and evening in the form of some strong thunderstorms just offshore. And they really do give Fraser Island a little bit of a blasting as well as they move through and then hopefully easing off by around midnight or very early in towards Tuesday morning. It'd be a nice line of thunderstorms offshore Tuesday morning, bring in some cool uh, southwesterly winds for the Brisbane area. Uh, but yeah, they will be well and truly gone by uh, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, Brisbane and the Gold Coast and also the Sunshine Coast really not expecting anything in terms of rainfall, and that is reciprocated amongst rainfall accumulation. Uh, you can see that rainfall accumulation in the Brisbane metro will be around, will be, it will be nothing. It's not going to be around anything. It will be nothing. Uh, for Hampton probably up towards 20 millimetres or so. Gladstone itself will be very hit and miss. The forecast model is expecting 2 millimetres, but there is a chance that they do get higher rainfall accumulations. The Access G3 model expecting up towards 10 millimetres for Bundaberg and then also 20 millimetres down towards Harvey Bay. The wettest of the locations on Fraser Island probably up towards 40 millimetres or so, uh, which in the rainfall band that it's going to be streaming in ashore from, it's going to be in this very heavy sort of rainfall uh, here. It's going to be slow moving and very heavy, so we'll likely be seeing some uh, torrential falls and possibly some flash flooding as this system moves ashore. Um, and you can already see some of the shower activities on the out, outer band of this sort of thundercloud moving ashore through here down towards Gladstone and Agnes Water. You can see already dumping around 10 millimetres or so an hour. And considering it is slow moving, you're probably going to be seeing rainfall persist for around an hour or two for these sort of locations. But yeah, that's kind of the wrap up on the strong rainfall showers down here. There again, nothing interesting, but they are affecting central Queensland. So, and considering it is uh, kind of the most interesting thing happening around Australia, right now, uh, I do feel like it is necessary to cover it. Now, I would say Cyclone Olga is happening around Australia because it is. However, it's not expected to impact land at all, and it has pretty much died off last night. It really did uh, enter that unfavorable environment by around yesterday evening, exactly when I thought it would. It really did do what it was meant to do, this tropical cyclone. It did rapidly intensify, of course, a lot faster than what the forecast models and the Bureau of Meteorology did expect, and also from what I expected, but it was a small system in a very favorable environment so uh, there's no surprises that that happened there we were all just being conservative with the forecast of course wind speeds on um oh, apparently this is a ship here i thought that was rally shoals rally shoals wind speeds of around at 55 kilometers an hour we're likely going to see those jump up a little bit as the inner core of the tropical cyclone makes its closest approach in around at three hours time this ship through here will probably have skewed wind readings right now but you can see wind readings on the pilbara and the kimberley coastline at Room 10 kilometers an hour down towards Mandora, uh, 11 kilometers an hour, and then for even uh, across to La Grande Island, you're looking at 20 kilometer an hour winds. This is not a cyclone affecting Western Australia at all, even though it is very, very close to WA. Um, now, the peak of the tropical cyclone was tremendous. It was. It was probably close to Category 5 status on the Australian scale. Um, if I was going solely based off satellite estimates, I would go for Category 5 status. This was an exquisite looking system at peak intensity. It had a defined eye, it had a beautiful uh, central dense overcast, some beautiful convection wrapping around the center of circulation here of around
around minus 85 degrees Celsius. This had a very strong and destructive inner core, and it is really, really, really good news that this did not get itself overland because this tropical cyclone at peak intensity was of similar strength to severe tropical cyclone Ilsa of this time last year, and that system was a brute, that's for sure. And if this system held itself out for another couple of hours, it most likely would have gotten to Category 5 status as per Bureau of Meteorology uh, readings. So yeah, it, it, it is a very impressive tropical cyclone. It rapidly intensified from pretty much nothing, and look at where it got to, near Category 5 status. Very impressive work from Tropical Cyclone Olga, I have to say, and it's done that very, very well. However, over the past 12 hours, the system has started its terminal weakening phase, and it's now not the system that it once was. It's now probably a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone below severe tropical cyclone status. Um, kind of bad of me, but I actually haven't looked at the Bureau of Meteorology forecast this morning already. I'm in a bit of a rush to get this video out because I do have a long work day today. Uh, but we are still taking a look at this solely based off satellite estimates, which I do find to be very reliable as well. You can see the system very much in an environment of high wind shear. The system's no longer got that defined swirl around the center and all of its thunderstorm convection is being shifted down towards the south and it's moving over areas around Port Hedland and Broome right now. And we don't want to zoom in that far, that's for sure. Now, you would think with all of this intense cloud that's moving ashore, I mean, I have been saying in uh, previous videos that minus 60 degrees indicates strong thunderstorms. Well, if you're in watching from Port Hedland or Marble Bar or Broome, you'd be wondering where the heck are all the thunderstorms? Well, this is because this is what we call outflow from a tropical cyclone. It's just wispy cloud from the higher levels, and it is really high up this cloud. So it's going to be a pretty gloomy day for areas around Port Hedland and Broome and across 80 Mile Beach, very, very remote part of Western Australia, but it will be a gloomy day nonetheless. Uh, conditions will not be fine, and there might be one or two light showers here and there. Some very intense rainfall actually in the outer bands of this tropical cyclone that's moving through. We might get a better look of it on radar imagery in around 12 hours time as it gets onto the outer edges of the Port Headland radar, but I'm really hoping and wishing at that point. Um, apart from that, nothing really interesting happening with Tropical Cyclone Olga. It's a dying system, but in a few days, it's probably going to be making a cyclonic pass or even a landfall if it's really lucky, probably on Wednesday afternoon as it goes right past Exmouth and then in towards Coral Bay. And we are going to actually take a look at the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast cone. You can see Category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone right now. That's dramatically overestimated, but the Bureau of Meteorology is a little bit behind on this system. They are not calling for this storm to make a landfall or a close pass. It's not even in the scope of possibility from the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast. The cone of uncertainty doesn't take it over Western Australia at all, which I think is reasonable at this time. But I do also want to highlight the possibility that there is a good chance this tropical cyclone does make itself uh, at home very close to Western Australia. The Eastern Gulf calling for a very close pass as a tropical low, probably on around Thursday, making the landfall actually the remnant energy of this tropical cyclone. The Axis G3 as well, calling for this to pass very close to Western Australia, closer than what the view of meteorology is expecting. So I do believe on a Wednesday evening, Exmouth is going to have to uh, really buckle down for a bit of a bumpy night, Wednesday evening into Thursday morning. Quite a few rain showers moving through the area, and possibly some gusty winds as well. So if you do live in Exmouth, just to heads up Wednesday and Thursday might be a little bit of a rough night but definitely clearing out by around Thursday early afternoon that's for sure. I wouldn't recommend taking any cyclone preparations at this time. There's no chance the system is going to be strong at that uh, point in time. There might be about 25 millimeters of rainfall and a few gusty winds here and there but it won't be anything crazy. If you do live in an area susceptible to flooding on a king tide, then it might be advised to sandbag just to be extremely cautious, but you won't be in any trouble if you don't sandbag. It's just kind of that safety net in case the tropical cyclone does anything funny. Uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't advise, I wouldn't directly advise sandbagging right now if you live in a very flood prone area, but if you do have an extra couple of hours to kill and you want to be as safe as possible, then sandbagging is probably a good idea in Exmouth, but that is being extremely extremely cautious. I can't stress that enough. Now, there has been a couple of shifts in the forecast in regards to this system delivering quite a lot of rainfall to Western Australia. Well, either way this forecast goes, it's going to deliver a little bit of rainfall around Exmouth and also into some of the remote mining areas in the form of thunderstorms from its inflow and outflow features. Um, and you can see areas, Carnarvon expecting 15 millimetres, Exmouth probably up towards 50 millimetres actually. Coral Bay itself maybe 25 millimetres and then the Carrara and Onslow maybe 
you about 10 millimeters a pop as well. So there will be a little bit of rainfall lingering around. The Eastern Wiff is the real rain producer because it actually takes this tropical cyclone ashore, makes landfall, which I'm not overly confident with. I don't want to call it uh, right now, but there is still a chance this forecast does happen. And if it does happen, it will be a tropical low. It's not going to be a cyclone. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a forecast uh, that we do need to be keeping a close eye on, that's for sure. You can see it moving ashore on around the Shark Bay Dedham sort of area and then moving inland and delivering about 20 millimetres of very welcome rainfall to the northern wheat belt, maybe parts of the central wheat belt as well as it moves uh, further into Western Australia. I mean, this is just a brutal forecast for Perth. No rainfall there for the next five days. In fact, no rainfall for Perth for the next 10 days even. Uh, but yeah, quite a bit of rainfall could be possible in around five or 10 days, uh, five or six days time, probably at the end of Friday and Saturday. Uh, it looks like this tropical low is going to spark a run of thunderstorms Friday night and then into Saturday night. This is going to be something that we'll watch quite closely on the forecast and cover in great detail as it happens. Tomorrow, I'll be able to give a definitive answer on the storm's track over Exmouth or Coral Bay, if it is going to be tracking like that, that's for sure. Uh, but at this time, I'm not overly confident in that actually happening. Now, just to push out the video even longer and waffle about something that really doesn't need to be waffled, we're going to take a look at the tropics before we go down south and talk about a little bit of snow. You can see uh, that tropical low that's expected to form in the Arafura Sea by next Sunday or Monday. It is still on the forecast around Dili on Timor, uh, Timor rather, but it isn't. It's been kicked off the forecast runs pretty much completely. The Access G3 generally always has something spicy for us in around the uh, eight to 10 day forecast period, but I don't reckon that this is going to be something that we're gonna be seeing um, at all. And again, considering the rainfall is still now well offshore, it's now an Indonesia threat. It's not something that I'm going to be putting in my Australian weather forecasts. Cairns remaining dry. It definitely looks like wet season. 2024 is well and truly over. Or it's definitely winding down at this point. And Thursday Island and Cape West are going to be the only two places to really be receiving significant rainfall over the next month because Cairns 50 millimeters or so over the next 10 days. And most of that will actually fall uh, over the coming couple of days. It definitely looks like they are moving into their dry season at this time, which right around Easter, it is uh, something that the forecast models did get quite right. Now we're going to go down south because there is another front that's going to be colliding with the Victorian coastline this evening, and that is going to be bringing the first snow of 2024. Snow season 2024 will get underway this evening or into tomorrow morning. The Eastern Reef expecting around 10 centimetres of wet snow to fall on the Kosciuszko Mountain and the uh, extreme high elevations in New South South Wales. I'd be expecting snow over an elevation of 1700 millimetres uh, tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Conditions will be conducive towards snow. They will be, temperatures will be around freezing um, and the front will actually be strong enough that it will be generating a lot of cold air across Victoria and New South Wales. So yeah, conditions looking very good for snow and that's why we're going to be seeing over the next three days, possibly up towards 10 centimetres of snow for some locations uh, in the Victorian highlands and maybe up towards 5 centimetres around Threadbow and Jindabyne. Uh, again, nothing crazy for some of the bigger population centres such as Omeo or uh, Hotham. Um, Threadbow itself will probably see the first significant snow of their season, but yeah, towns like Cabramara and Adamidi are likely going to be missing out on the significant snowfall, maybe a very light dusting there. Tasmania as well, missing out pretty much completely on the snowfall, but maybe half a centimetre is possible. This front isn't going to be anything crazy. It's not going to be delivering anything ridiculous in terms of rainfall either. Might be some strong winds um, with the passage of this front, but again, nothing crazy once again. I actually am excited to see is winter gusts on Matt Syker Island because as we all know Matt Syker Island can throw up some crazy wind gusts and it looks like it already is starting to do that actually 52 kilometers an hour out of the northwest right now wind gusts up to 80 kilometers an hour this certainly is starting to get quite stormy down there and if we were to take a look at the satellite imagery for this uh, front that's moving through yeah it's just about to collide with the Tasmanian coastline will probably happen at around lunchtime today uh, and then moving through Hobart probably at around uh, rush hour so again stay safe on the roads and it's this speckly cloud behind it that we're going to be watching out very closely this is the stuff that's going to contain the snow and it will be snowing as it gets towards the victorian highlands and also towards the new south wales highlands too and then just a quick look at the satellite imagery nationwide nothing too crazy going on this big front's going to collide with new zealand pretty soon uh, soon um but again nothing too crazy happening it looks like we're moving into a much more stable period of weather that's about the latest that i have on the australian 
Weather Picture. Thank you so much for watching this video. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now, and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.